All right. So our live lesson for today is reviewing for the benchmark. Um, one of the teachers here made a Jeopardy game that has to do with the things that we learned in math this quarter. So it's got um, coordinate points, distance between things, absolute values, um, area, surface area, volume, statistics, all kinds of fun things. So we are going to use this as a review for tomorrow. The thing is, though, if you struggle with this a lot, I would use, like, I would go Google some things and um, relearn a few of these things if you really struggle with it today because it's what your test is on tomorrow. Make sense? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to present my screen. I'm going to um, get the Jeopardy game going and explain it before we get going. But we have played Jeopardy before in this class. Okay, so for Jeopardy, it's right over here. I'm going to play now. Um, I don't think that I can choose more than five teams. We're not going to play as teams. It's going to be individual. Um, because I cannot do more than five, I can't make a team for each person and keep track of your points. So you, on your own, need to keep track of your own points. Okay, so it's going to be in increments of 100, 200, 300, 400, or 500 points. So you need to make sure you have something next to you to be able to do the math for adding together your points and the math to do the problem, right? The other thing is that you guys need to be honest about your points. I can't, um, we're going to be kind of. So, Babe, oh, there's not actually that many points. Oh, you're going to have money, too. Now look at the peanut pizza. I feel like... <laughs> Hang on. Oh, there's two Jeopardy games. Okay, so maybe for the first half hour or first 20 minutes, we will do the one that I have up right now. For the second 20 minutes, we'll just continue with the points and go to the second Jeopardy game. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So we're not going to be able to finish them all. So what we do is uh, one person... In person, we'll choose a problem, and then we'll switch to someone online to choose a problem. We'll go back and forth. You'll say, I want to do quadrant for 300, and we will choose that problem, and we'll do that problem. Mahdi already put one in there. <laughs> Hang on. So um, if you get it correct, you will get all of the points. If uh, during that problem I say, okay, you can give yourself half of the points, then you can give yourself half. If you get it completely wrong, give yourself no points. But you need to uh, make sure that you're being honest with the amount of points that you get. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a prize for anybody. But you get the pride of winning. Yeah, you get to say, I won the review. Right All right. So um, I was going to do in person first, and Wadi already put one in there, so we're going to do it. What was it again? Quadrants, Quadrants for 500. This is your first question. It's a coordinate plane. The four quadrants on a coordinate plane. So try that problem. How can a point... Just write down your answer, have it somewhere so that you can say if you got it right or wrong, okay? We're not going to put it in the chat or anything. You're answering on your own and practicing. And again, if uh, you're noticing that you're getting a lot of them wrong, then you might need to go review before tomorrow's test, okay? So this one, how can a point have a location that is not in a quadrant? If you're confused about what a quadrant it is, it's a coordinate plane. Quadrants are one, two, three, four. So how can there be a point that's not in a quadrant, like on the line, basically? How oh. is that a thing? Oh, I'm going to get the phone while you guys do that. Ready, set, get off. Get the gun. So I have nine in class right now, and then if we add two when they come back, it would be another and then it's three when they come back. That would make it twelve and three. And I have enough room for everybody to have one back. Mm -hmm. 
find your favorite walking person in the NFL. I have a Okay, let's go ahead and go over this one. Sorry, I had a phone call. The answer is it's located on the X or the Y axis. So if you said something about it being on the line or on the origin, you can give origin. Yeah, if you said it's on the origin, that's the middle right here. If it has a zero on one of in your ordered pair, that works too. If you have anything. Along those lines, it's 500 points. If you're kind of like, I'm not too sure, just give yourself 200 points and we'll go with that. And if you have no idea if you got that right, then give yourself no points. 500 for like the third time. All right. I need an online person to give me the next one. You can yell it out if you want to. Anybody online? What's the next one? Anyone? Are we there? Mean me and mode range. Okay, for how much? 300? Okay, mean, medium, mode, and range for 300. Here's your next one. Find the range. Remember, the range, you need to take the biggest number and subtract the smallest number. I'll give you guys 20 more seconds. Biggest number minus the smallest one. All done. All right. The answer for this one, you should have taken the number nine and subtracted zero and gotten nine. If you got nine, you can give yourself 300 points. If you got anything other than nine, no points on that one. Okay. How are we doing so far? Making sense? Uh, yeah. In person. Don, go ahead. You're the next. Range, okay, so we're going to do mean, median, mode, and range for 500 this time. Uh, sure. Where this one requires a bit of time. You need to explain how to find the mean, and then you need to explain how to find the median, and the mode, and the range. All four. Explain them all. It doesn't need to be complete sentences. Just write down the concept. How do you find all of these things? I'll give you... Yeah, so like if there's another word for it, that's fine, yeah. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. So tell me how to find these four things. I'll give you guys about two minutes to write this out and get the right answers. I'm going to check uh, attendance really quick, too. About one more minute. There's a bug. Can you guys get it? Ready? I'm not ready. I'm not ready. No, I meant for me to get the bug. Oh, I lost it. There it is. Uh, what was it? A bug. Oh, dang! She's a murderer. <laughs> 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 Show the answers. Um, 
Dylan, how do you find the mean? Um, add plus divide numbers. Good. So add up all of your numbers and divide by the number of numbers. Who wants to tell me how to find the median? Data? Good. Put your numbers in order from least to greatest. Yeah. Find the number in the middle. What about the mode? What about someone online? How do you find the mode? Any ideas? The mode. Find the most common number. Good. Find the number that happens the most. And then the range. How about online again? How do you find the range? <laughs> subtract the smallest number and the largest number. Good. Take the biggest number and subtract the smallest one. Good. Um, we are on... Uh, yep, but we need an online person to choose the next one. Oh, yeah, sorry, that one was worth 500. If you got all four, give yourself 500. If you got... Yeah, if you got three of them, give yourself 400. If you got two of them, give yourself 200. If you only got one, give yourself 100. And if you got none of them, zero. Okay, online person, who would like to choose the next one? Just yell it out. Doesn't matter to me. Someone's in the chat. What's to say? You are not online, Lottie. You are sitting in front of me. That doesn't count. Someone that is not sitting directly in front of me. Distance 400. Distance for 400. Thank you, Olivia. Here we go. If each unit is equal to two miles, what is the distance between the points 5, negative 3, and negative 3, 5? Remember, on these ones, you need to find the ones that are different, add them together, that's your distance, and then you need to think about the fact that the distance is two miles. So, take about two minutes, work this one out. Wait, so you just find the number of the two different ones? Mm -hmm. Wait. What do you do? Are you yeah, I got to take the absolute value. Yep. This one was equal Okay, let's go ahead and go over this one. I want to review this one with you guys. So if you can, well, first of all, what does this look like? Can you guys see this behind me? Yeah. On the, uh, on the online. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, so if you're looking at my little screen online and looking at the whiteboard behind me, to do this, you need to find the numbers that are different. So are my X's different or my Y's? The x's are different, so you get rid of the y's. You take the 5, the absolute value of 5, plus the absolute value of negative 5. What is the absolute value of 5? It just stays positive 5. What is the absolute value of negative 5? Also 5. It just becomes positive. 5 plus 5 is 10. But I'm not done. Why? Because each one equals 2, so multiply by 2. Yes. So the distance between these two points is 10, but it's telling you that each time you count, it's 2 miles. So we need to multiply this by 2. What is 10 times 2? So the distance is how many miles? 20 miles. 20 miles. So if you got that, if you got 20, give yourself, how many points was that? 4? Well, each one was worth 2 miles. So yeah, you got to multiply it by 2. Well, I'm getting there. How many points was that? Four? 400? So if you got 20 miles, give yourself 400. If you got 10 miles, give yourself 200. If you did not get there, zero points on that one. Okay, Charlie, you were my next online or in person. Which one would you like to do? Reflecting ordered pairs. So taking a point and reflecting it across. 
Reflections for 500. Here we go. What is the reflection of the ordered pair 5, 9 when it's reflected over the y axis and the x axis? So take about a minute, work on that one. Well, if you take the number 4, 9, it's over here, right? It says reflect it over the y axis. And the x axis. Where does it end up? What's your new ordered pair? What is over the origin? Yeah. Technically. What's your new ordered pair? That's what it's asking you. You don't have to do any adding or subtracting. Okay, about 30 more seconds. Okay, so remember, um, those of you that are online, go ahead and look up at the whiteboard screen for me. When you are reflecting points across x axis or y axis, you need to take the opposite of these. So if I need to first reflect it across the y axis, like this, you need to change the x coordinate. What's the opposite of 4? Negative. It becomes negative 4. That puts your point over here. Now we need to reflect it across the x axis, which means it's going to go down. If I reflect across the x axis, you need to change the y coordinate. What does 9 change to? Negative 9. Negative nine. That's your answer. Negative 4, negative 9. You reflect it over both, you change both, which means you take the opposite. Make it negative or make it positive. What if we do that separately? Like, come on, negative 4, 9, and 4, negative 9. It needs to be one order pair at the end. So you got to combine them. Does that help Yes. If you got both of these, if you got negative 4, negative 9, you can get all 500 points. If you just got one of them, only change one of them to a negative, give yourself 250 points. If you did not do either of that correctly, no points. Okay, let's do two more. We'll see. Maybe one more and then we'll go to the other one. All right, uh, that was an in-person one. So online, go ahead and shout one out. Let's watch our next one. Reflection 400. Reflections for 400. Here we go. What is the reflection of the ordered pair 7, negative 7, over the y-axis. So think about that. If you're reflecting over the y, which, across the top. which one do you need to change? So think about 30 seconds. All you have to do is change one of the numbers. You just got to figure out which one. It has been a while. I'll give you a hint. It's always the opposite. That's the only hint I'm going to give. Yeah. Okay, 10 seconds. Four hundred points. Okay. All right, so let's review it. To take our number seven, negative seven. So I plotted that point kind of right down here, right? Where it would be. If we're reflecting it over the y-axis, it's gonna go across over here. When you reflect it over the y, do you change the x value or the y value? The x. The x you always change the opposite. If you reflect it over the y-axis, change the x coordinate. So what does this positive 7 become? Negative 7. Does this negative 7 change? No. Not at all. It stays the same. So your answer is negative 7, negative 7. How much was that one worth? If you got that correct totally, it is 400 points. If you changed the wrong one, give yourself 200 points. If you did all of it wrong, no points. So our answer here is negative 7, negative 7. Let's do one more on this one, and then we'll flip over to our second Jeopardy game, and you can continue your points. Kaylin, go ahead. 
Me medium mode range for 400. Here you go. Find the median of these numbers. Find the median. Your one hint that I will give you is that they need to be in order from least to greatest first. That's like a big hint. That is a big hint. So hopefully you guys get it. I don't have to put them least to them. Can I do it up there? That's okay. We're going to do it kind of quickly because I want to move on to the next one. Hmm? Oh, did you hear that pop? Do you remember what way to pop a finger? Put your finger like this, and like that, and you go like this. That sounds awful. No, oh, thank you. For the median, yeah. the focus for the median, you needed to put them in order from least to greatest. Now that we've done that, what do we do? Find the one in the middle. Find the one in the middle. So start on the outside. Cross off the zero and the nine. Take a step in and cross off the nine and the six. There's two eights left in the middle, so you're supposed to find the middle of eight. But what? Eight. Your answer is eight, right? So our median is eight. Um, this is kind of an all or nothing one. If you got eight, you can give yourself 400 points. If you did not, you do. It's easy because if there's like three or more numbers, it's pretty much going to be the That is true. Okay, so. Yeah, so I'm going to open up this PowerPoint right here. And it has the second part of our Jeopardy. This one will be about area, volume. Um, keep your points from the other one. We're not restarting. Keep your points, and we'll keep going. Sorry, i got to get this to load. Give it a second. I should have opened it before. My bad. Okay, so my assumption is that if we just present it, we can click on it and it'll take us to the correct one. Hopefully that works. So uh, that was an online person. In person, Jada, you want to choose the next one? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, wait, one second. Sorry. This middle one, volume of pyramids, we did not do that. It's not on your test, so don't choose one from that row. Any of the other ones are good, though. Go ahead. Surface area for how much? 400. Let's see if this works. Oh, what happened? It did not work. No, yeah, it didn't work. It didn't go to it though. It was taking away the numbers. Yeah, but you gotta, we gotta go to the right one. Uh, surface area. I can't tell which one it is. This is not a helpful. Um, let me try this one more time. Let me download it a different way. Sorry, it's loading. I want to be able to just click on it and it goes to it. So let me try this again. Slideshow. Surface area for 400. There we go. Find the surface area of that. Remember, to find the surface area, you need to find the area of all five of those shapes and then add them all together. So this could take you a little while. Actually, kind of a long time. I'll give you guys about five minutes on this one.
This is kind of a long one, so I'll give you guys a couple more minutes. change them after fourth quarter. Or I mean when we start fourth quarter. Which one is that? Yeah. Uh maybe. We'll see. It will do about two more minutes? Kind of a longer one. Sorry. I don't even know the answer. This is 400 points. All right, about 30 more seconds. Okay, so um, we have a square based pyramid here, right? Because the bottom is a square, and if you fold up all of these triangles, it's going to create a pyramid, right? In order to find the surface area, we need to find the area of all five of these shapes. The middle one is 12 by 12. It's a square. How do you find the area of that? Multiply. What is 12 times 12? 144. So the middle is 144. To find the area of these triangles, you need to take the base times the height and divide it by 2. So you're taking 20.88. Can you guys see this still? If you're looking at my thing? Yes, but that's harder. You understand that, but a lot of people won't. So use that for yourself, okay? Good. So we have base times height. So 20.88 times 12. You multiply that, and it was 250.56, I believe. And then we still have to divide that by 2. And when you divide by 2, you get 125.28. If one triangle is 125.28, what are all these other ones? Also 125.28. If I know all of these areas, what can I do with them? Add them, all. add them all up and you have your surface area. I have not added them. The answer, though, is 645 and 12 hundredths. Anybody get that? Oh, you have to add them all together at the end. Oh, yeah. I thought you were supposed to do one bottom triangle and then that's the whole answer. Nope, it's all of them. If you got maybe like halfway there, give yourself 200 points. Would you get 125.28 halfway there? Uh, you can have a hundred points for that. 
If you got really close to this, maybe your adding was wrong or a little bit of the multiplication was off, give yourself 350 points. You were close. The total answer is 645 and 12 tenths on the board, or 1,200. If you were close, give yourself 350. If you got it right on the dot, awesome, 400 points. If you were like, meh, this will, I just said it like five times, Charlie. 400 points. Okay. Um, that was an in-person person that chose that one, so we need someone online to choose our next one. If you're still there, hopefully. Anybody online want to choose the next one? Yes, no, maybe so. All right, we'll go to an in-person person. Someone else choose one. Uh, down, go ahead. Um, the, um, I guess area of triangles. Area, area of triangles 500. Remember, area of triangle, you need to multiply the base times the height, divide by two. Here's your problem. Find the area, base times height, divide by two. So does anybody keep speaking to us instead? They're, they're probably not there. That's all right. Base times height divided by two. I'll give you guys about two minutes. We're playing Jeopardy, so feel free to walk around and help out. Reviewing for our test tomorrow. Do you want to start with anything today? Uh, I didn't solve that part. Take your base, multiply it by your height, and divide by two. Find the base and the height, and then divide it all by two when you multiply. So first you need to figure out what's the base and the height. They have four numbers here. You're not going to use all of them. The base is usually the one that's on the bottom. So in this case, it is 7. We're multiplying the base times the height. What's the height of this triangle? Seven. Also 7. You want to make sure if it gives you a dotted line, that's always the height. Whatever is from the bottom to the tippy top of your triangle is your height. So 7 times 7 and then divided by 2. What is 7 times 7? 49. And when you divide by 2, what do you get? 24.5 is correct. You should get 24.5 inches square, square inches. That's okay if you didn't put that. So if you got, that was worth 500 points. If you got 24 and a half, you can give yourself 500 points. Uh, you can have 200 points. If you got... 49, because you forgot to divide by 2, you can give yourself half. That is 250 points. 
Dude, you gotta start listening a little bit better. I've been going over the points, and then immediately after I go over it, you're asking me how many points. You gotta listen a little bit better on that part. Okay. That was an in person one. So, online, anybody wanna choose our next one? Yes, but someone in person chose it, so let's give online a chance to choose one. Anybody online wanna choose one? You can just throw it out there and let us know. Volume of prisms, 400. Okay, volume for 400. Remember, volume, you need to multiply. The length times the width times the height. So lots of multiplying here. Here is your problem. Length times width times the height. Some fun little decimals for you. One more minute. Okay, we're going to go ahead and review this one. So, when we do the volume, length times width times height, you should have done 4.5 times 3.2 and gotten your answer. I don't know the answer. So you get your answer. And then you should have taken whatever your answer is and multiplied that times 4.2. It doesn't... Yeah, it does not matter the order that you multiply these numbers in. You just need to multiply all three of them together. Your final answer is 60 and 48 hundredths. If you got that, you can give yourself full credit. I got 60, it was. I got 60, 0, 6, 0. I got no more so it was worth 400. It was worth 400. So if you got 
that exactly, you can give yourself 400 down, give yourself 350. Um, if you got, maybe you only got to multiply two of the numbers together, give yourself 200. You are on your way to getting there. If you are nowhere near that and you multiplied all three, then give yourself no credit. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead. Let's see how, what time is it. Let's do two more. Um, that was an online person. We need in person, one person to choose one. Yes, you haven't chosen one yet. Go ahead. So pyramids we didn't do, so skip this one. So you want to do prisms? Or we, we're not doing any of the pyramids one. It's just on this one. We didn't learn how to do that. It's not on your test. So choose a different category. Volume of prisms? How much? 200. Volume of prisms for 200. I'm giving you one minute because I think you can do this one quickly. Yes, Alex. Quickly. Volume of prisms is length times width times the height. Thirty more seconds. Length times width times height. I need to drink some water. Okay. At least he's listening. All right. So in order to find the volume, you need to multiply the length times the width times the height. What am I multiplying together on this one? Five times two times ten. Let's try five times two. What is that? Ten. And we still need to multiply that by ten. What is your answer? Ten times ten is a hundred. Your final answer is one hundred centimeters cubed. If you wrote that, is totally fine. If you got ten because you only multiplied two numbers together, give yourself half credit so you can get one hundred points. If you got one hundred, you can give yourself two hundred points because you got the answer correct. That was a quick one. Cool. All right. Uh, that was an in person. Yeah. How about someone online? Let's choose another one. Someone online. Skylar, you want to choose one? Okay. Uh, either type it out or say it, Skylar, so we know. But he can't say. Okay, then you got to type it up. Say it, Aaron. Whenever it pops up, let me know because I can't see it. So let me know when he answers. Um, Thank you. I don't know if it has a name. It probably does, but I don't know. What does it say? <laughs> Area of triangles for how much? 400. All right, remember, triangles are base times height divided by 2. Here's your problem. Area, base times height divided by 2. Now you got to figure out which one's the base and which one's the height. It gives you more information than you need, so you got to figure out which one you use. Oh, the dog already knows. Oh my god. What? I don't know how to pronounce that. Alright, base times height divide by two. How do you pronounce that? Um. Thank <laughs> you. 
15 more seconds. This one is a quick one. Yoshi, go back to Matt. All right. Before we can work on this one, we got to figure out what the base and the height are. This is an upside down triangle, but that doesn't change what your base is. What is the base of it? No. Hmm? It's, the, the base is six. The bottom of your triangle is six. It may be upside down, but bottom is still six. And then how tall is it? And so we are taking six times ten and then dividing that by two. What is six times ten? Sixty. And when you divide sixty by two, you get thirty. Your answer here is thirty. Oh, I think we get this. If you got 60, you can give yourself half credit, and that's 200 points. That's good. If you got 30, as you should have, you can give yourself all 400 points. Sorry. If you did not get anywhere close, um, no points. Sorry. Let's do one more. That was an online person, so we need one more person in person to choose one. Alex, you have not chosen one before. Surface area for 300. Here you go. Okay, find the area of all five of the shapes. There are three rectangles and two triangles. Find the area of them all and then add everything together at the end. That's a lot of work. I'm going to give you guys about five minutes on this one. Okay, find the area of all five shapes. Add them together. That's okay. So I'm going to give you guys um hints and help you out. So Okay, so the first one, this is 28 times 7 in this one. In the middle, we have 24 times 28. In this side, we have 25 times 28. For both triangles, you are going to do 24 times 7. Let me, let me write that better. 24 times 7 divided by 2 and 24 times 7 divided by 2. Once you get all of those answers, Add them all together. So those that's your hints. It's a lot of hints actually. So get to work on that part. find your total surface area. It's like if you are wrapping a present and you want to know exactly how much wrapping paper you need. So you got to make sure you cover all sides, top, bottom, front, back, everything. Is 
24 and 28. Because 7 is this little piece right here, 28 is the piece right here. So we come over, that's the same, the same height that I'm going to put there. All right, we're going to go ahead and review this. So on this one, you needed to find the area of all of the different shapes. I kind of did it already up here for you, right? The first one, you needed to take 28 times 7, and you get 196 for this small little rectangle over here. And the big one in the middle, you should have taken 24 times 28 and gotten 672. Um, nope, this is right. Sorry, the next one, the big rectangle should have been 25 times 28, which is 700. Your two triangles are going to be the same. 24 times 7 is 168. Divide that by 2, and you get 84 for both rectangles or triangles. Then you got to add them all together. If you add them all together, you should get 1,736. If you were super duper duper close, Give it to yourself. You can take all 300 points. If you maybe got all of the multiplication right, but you missed all of the addition, you can give yourself 200 points. If you were just kind of still working in about halfway there, but you were on the right track, you can give yourself 150 points. If you got it completely correct, all 300. But that was a pretty good review for our, um, what can we call it tomorrow? Our, our benchmark tomorrow. Oh, we have benchmark tomorrow? So.